uh, you won't believe who really hated the Electoral College, probably even more than Elizabeth Warren. Here's a hint. It's a man who wore a wig and helped write the Constitution, which really narrows it down. Well, the first part, I was like, oh, he's talking about me? But no, no. the Constitution <laughs> part rules it out. I, I don't know. Rules it out. Don't touch. <laughs> Funny. John Avalon, reality check? Here it is. So look, getting rid of the Electoral College. Radical left-wing fantasy, or as American as apple pie? Elizabeth Warren certainly jumping into the debate. My view is that every vote matters. That means get rid of the Electoral College. And that's got folks, talk, folks talking, both pro and con. So is this just a case of Dems trying to change the rules because they've won the popular vote but lost the presidency twice so far this century? Is this an insult to the Founding Fathers? And could it actually even happen? Well, it turns out that this isn't such a new idea. In fact, the Electoral College has been targeted for reform or abolition some 700 times, according to Jesse Wegman, who's writing a book on the subject. That's more than any other part of the Constitution. It was the subject of intense debate among the founders. The biggest controversy was the winner-take-all structure. James Madison, not a fan. He even called it evil at its maximum. One year after he wrote that, Andrew Jackson won the popular vote, but John Quincy Adams became president. The first of five times that's happened in our history. Happened again in 1876 and 1888, which made incumbent Grover Cleveland so mad that he ran again four years later and reclaimed the office his supporters felt had been stolen from him. This little glitch didn't happen during the 20th century, but reform efforts continued. In fact, Indiana Senator Birch Bayh, who just last week died at age 91, came within a few votes of advancing an amendment to abolish the Electoral College and replace it with a direct popular vote. By 1968, his effort commanded 80% approval, according to Gallup. One year later, the House of Representatives voted overwhelmingly to abolish the Electoral College. Even President Nixon was on board but was filibustered to death in the Senate by Southerners led by Strom Thurmond. Now, all of this was more or less forgotten until 2000, when George W. Bush won despite losing the popular vote. By that time, we were all getting a little used to the depressing idea that if you don't live in one of a handful of swing states, your vote's going to be taken for granted. So a new idea began percolating. It's called the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. Complicated name? It's actually pretty simple. States pass legislation committing their electoral college delegates to vote for the winner of the national popular vote. So far, 12 states and the nation's capital passed it. Colorado just last week. It's gotten support from Republicans as well as Democrats. And here's the thing. The compact won't kick in unless they get enough states to hit the requisite 270 electoral votes. And they still got a way to go. Oregon, New Mexico, and Nevada look like they may be next. This will face a court challenge, but it won't credibly be based on the right of states to allocate the electors however they like. That's settled. Instead, the big question is whether the compact between the states is constitutional. Look, Trump lost the popular vote by an unprecedented margin, but won the Electoral College because of 78,000 votes in three states. That certainly brought the idea back, but it's been debated since the days of James Madison. Now there's just renewed focus on figuring out how to make every American's vote count equally for president. And that's... Your reality check. Where it gets interesting, though, John, is the absence of a movement in red states or the states that always vote one way. Until we see that, I'm not so sure I will believe there is a national push to get it done. There's certainly that obstacle. It's a reflection of our polarization, which is why I think it's so fascinating that back in 1968, it had 80% approval mm -hmm. in the nation. And we came really close to getting that amendment passed. All right, John Avalon, that was very interesting. Thank you so much for that.